Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and um, we're back on with the um, Pi BB20. Um, I know it's been a couple of days since I uh, made a video on this, I've been rather busy with um, various Christmas related um, things, but I have been um, carrying on working on this thing and I've um, finished basically completely um, doing all the capacitors that I needed to do. Uh, there was actually a hell of a lot more um, caps in this that I had to replace than I was initially anticipating. Um, I'll flip it up and I'll let, I'll let you have a look what it looks like underneath now. Ooh, it's certainly a bit of a heavy chassis this. Especially with the CRT still in um, still in situ. Right, let me, uh, let me get you up. Let's see if we can see this now. There we go. As you can see I've got the um, shielding back on the RF can there. But all the capacitors in there have been replaced. All the capacitors basically in the entire RF section have been replaced. Now, if you uh, remember from my previous video, in fact I've got all the capacitors I've taken out of this thing here. And to be fair, these, these are the old wax paper capacitors. Um, those I was really expecting to have to replace because these are getting worse and worse as the years go by. Um, so at one point you used to be able to leave most in, perhaps just change one or two, uh, depending where they were in circuit. But it seems to be, like I said, year on year these are getting less and less uh, reliable and just turning basically into resistors. And I think just about every single one in there um, was basically reading as a resistor. Um, what I was surprised on, however, was these uh, the Sprague capacitors. Now, these these are found usually um, are generally fairly reliable. I mean, you do find the odd one that's um, failed, but generally speaking, they're reasonably reliable. But what I think has happened with these is happened on just about every single one of them. I don't know if you're going to make this out on film, but if we turn it round, can you see it's deformed? You see that there, how it's all squashed in. And it is literally like this on every single one of them. And it looks like, they basically, when these were assembled, they used too small a capacitor clamp on these um, Sprague capacitors, and it actually squashed the metal casing. Now, all I can imagine is that basically... W with that damage on the case, obviously it's going to be pressing on the foil layers inside the capacitor. Uh, the, basically, uh, I don't know if you know, but how these capacitors are made is basically you've got a, a paper with two layers of um, foil, uh, one on each side of the paper. The paper acts as the dielectric. Um, and the reason these fail, basically, is the paper degrades over time with moisture ingress and various things, and they start to short out. Now, I wonder if the fact they're actually pushed in like that so that those fa foils and papers are being actually compressed together more than they normally would be is the reason that every single one of these, and I do mean every one, I think I found one, I think, and that's that one that didn't get squashed, um, that actually still read as a capacitor. Um, even so, it's that was still leaky. Uh, it would have probably worked, but it, like I said, it wouldn't have been a reliable part. But every other one of these um, Sprague capacitors, to a greater or a lesser degree, has actually got it's actually deformed the can. Like I said, and it's all down to it. I think they used a slightly too smaller um, clamp, or they tightened them down too tight and bent them. I've never come across that before. I've never come across a set where every single one of those has been bad. Bad to the point where um, I did even try doing a very gentle reform on one, see if I could actually get it to come back as a capacitor. Basically put a couple hundred volts with a current limit on it and see if the capacitor would reform. And no, even after you know a few hours, um, it just shows up as a resistor. Um, I also, I've changed all the electrolytics, um, obviously you saw in the first, uh, I think the second video I did on this, we changed out the main smoothers there. Um, I did go round all the other electrolytics in the um, set, and again, they'd either turned into resistors, or they were way, way out of um, value. 
so I just went ahead. I mean, I may I may change this because um, I didn't have actually because I wasn't expecting to change them all out straight away. Really, I was quite expecting to get the set working with um, at least a few of the original electrolytics in there. But no, they're all bad in this. Um, I didn't actually have a couple of values, uh, namely um, there should be an eight UF capacitor there. Um, I ended up using a couple of, um, I think one, I think I ended up, it's about 7 UF, or 7.4 UF, I um, salvaged a couple of um, electrolytic capacitors out of some old um, compact fluorescent um, light bulbs, uh, I got a, um, a 4.7 and a 2.4 or something like that, anyway, paralleled them up come out with just over 7 UF and I've used that just as a replacement but I have ordered a um, 250 volt um, sorry 350 volt um, 8 UF um, capacitor to go in there but for initial testing that should work fine um, I think there was one other I had to do the same thing I can't quite remember where it is now but there was one other instance where I didn't have quite the right value but I just paralleled two together um, and that'll work for the time being um, like I said we'll, I will swap them out at a later date but that's basically you know that I'm happy now to be able to apply power to this set that's basically what I'm um, I'm getting at like I said there's no capacitors left in here which I'm worried really about short and you're doing um, anything nasty um, what we haven't done is we haven't tested any of the resistors in this set uh, we haven't tested any of the ceramic capacitors but um, to be fair ceramic capacitors generally speaking don't fail um, like these uh, the flat capacitors down here they're very very reliable I think these are mylar um, type capacitors and then there's some little ceramics uh, dotted about up and around in the RF stage there and like I said generally speaking I've they're very very reliable they very very rarely go wrong so there's no point at this stage looking into things like that like I said, we've got the set to the stage where I'm happy to apply power to it see if we can get first light on the screen and take it from there like I said, I'm not too worried about the resistors for now um, what we will do is we'll just ascertain that we've actually got continuity um, through the heater chain again so we have done this already but we've done a lot of um, fiddling about with the set so um, we'll make sure we've got heater continuity and then I think it's going to be that time and we'll, um, we'll actually apply some power to this thing and see what it's going to do see if we can actually get anything at all to um, appear on the screen right, we'll get it down like that and what I think I'll do I'll probably have it I'll probably set it at an angle like that. Now you'll be able to see the screen better than I can. But what it does mean is I can get round the back here and I can just get to some of the um, the controls on the back if I want to adjust them and I can still get to the um, front controls. But I can also, it means that I can uh, make sure I'm on using one hand when I'm actually um, working on the set. It will be a different hand but I can, I'll basically only have one hand working on the set at um, any one time. Um, we've got a few other things we just need, some safety checks we need to do. First off, let's get the meter out and let's just make sure we've got heater continuity. There's no point trying to connect this thing up and switch it on if um, we know that we've not got a, um, a path across all the heaters. So there we go. I'll switch that off. yeah there we go so we have definitely got heat continuity that's good next thing I want to check is just to make sure that um, black here is indeed um, definitely neutral and goes to the um, chassis so if we disconnect that so we've got um, one side of the meter connected to the um, black which should be our neutral connection I'll just set the um Oops, set the test around onto continuity. Just make sure that that's working. There we go. We'll just go to the chassis. 
yeah there we go so we just want to make sure that um, the neutral because this is a, um, a hot chassis set basically one side of the mains goes to deck and you want to make sure that that side of the mains is the neutral side of the mains not the hot the live side of the mains so I'm happy with that so when we connect it up to the um, to the safe block and what have you uh, we know that the black is definitely neutral right other things we need to do let's just double check um, let's make sure that the mains voltage is actually set to um, the correct voltage because when these sets were made there was actually many different mains voltages in the UK and this set is set this set it can actually run on 230 volts 240 volts or 250 volts it is set currently in the 240 volts um, position and I know that the mains coming out of my uh, main socket it does vary a little bit but it's generally speaking um, between about 238 and 241 volts like I say it does um, fluctuate a little bit but generally speaking uh, my, mains, um, my mains voltage here tends to be around that so the um, 240 volt setting on the um, selector is exactly correct exactly correct now we should be okay there I'll just get that in fact what I'm going to do with the um, with this test meter is I'm going to measure the um, high, H, the high tension as it comes up we'll set this round to DC And we should be able to use this to monitor um, to make sure that we actually get the HT um, coming up and we we'll see what it actually comes up as. Just let me, uh, I'm going to need some different cables to do this. Just uh, bear with me a sec. That should work. In fact, this might work. Let's just connect that one. Plug that in. bother with that or not what I was thinking of doing basically this set doesn't have um, the audio connected at the moment for the initial um, switch on because the audio output transformer and this is actually um, back down in the um, cabinet um, downstairs in the living room but we're not really but that bothered about that at the moment I was just wondering whether I could um, connect and monitor the HT using the um, plug that the actual um, audio output transformer um, plugs into but um, I'm not going to bother at the moment actually I just want to see initially whether we're going to get this thing to um, fire up and we're not going to brute force this or anything what we're going to do you've seen this in um, some of my other videos if you've seen any of my videos on you know, repairing um, old radios um, this is a um, lamp limiter. I uh, believe in the US they're um, referred to as a um, dim bulb, a dim bulb device or a dim bulb tester. Um, basically, all it is is, is it, um, a current limiting device. What I've got is a 100 watt light bulb connected in series with the mains. And all it means, I and mean, we're not going to be able to run the TV properly through this. But what it means is for the initial power up of the set, if there's something ca catastrophic wrong, something's going to short out or something, instead of doing damage to the TV set, um, the light bulb will light and that basically that consumes the current and you can power off and obviously find out what the issue is. So it's just, it's just for the initial power up, it just gives us um, a, little, a little bit of extra safety basically. Um, it just gives us that little bit of peace of mind. I'll get the um, I'll get the safe block out. This is just again, it's just a a safe way to connect power to um, a device that doesn't have a um, a plug on it. 
really really handy things to have these um, especially if you you, know, you mess about with a lot of this old um, this old kit um, obviously we've got a colour code difference here because this is the old UK colour code and this is obviously because this is a reasonably new device this is the um, new col uh, UK colour code but it's dead simple um, brown's live and the old colour code red was live so we'll connect uh, red to brown in the uh, old colour code black was neutral and the new colour code obviously blue is neutral so we connect blue in like that also to note we've got a 3 amp fuse in there so if anything was to go wrong we do only have um, a 3 amp fuse um, when you buy these um, well when I bought this one you actually th had a 13 amp fuse in there and unless you're testing really high power devices you know heaters or that type of stuff which I wouldn't really recommend something this far really you're much better with a 3 amp fuse in there so basically that's it um, we're plugged in uh, we're switched on there essentially we'll switch off there when I close this and I turn that we should actually energize the um, TV and we'll see um, see if it actually does anything so that light there will basically start to glow it might actually start glowing quite brightly uh, because a TV set pulls quite a lot more current than a radio now I do have a hundred watt light bulb in there like I said, I think that will probably um, siphon off too much current for us to actually get the set fully operational. But we can at least see, uh, make sure that we get everything lighting up. Uh, we may be able to get first light on like that, but if not, we can just switch the um, li limiter out once we're happy. Um, let the set have full mains and actually see um, whether we're going to get first light off it. The one thing I will be keeping um, well away from... Um, basically is this section here uh, I will make sure my hand is well away from that and also I have to be careful on the back because there is actually a um, it's like a voltage um, plug on the back um, I'm not 100% sure what it's for but I know um, basically it's got mains on it and um, it's not um, isolated so you do have to be incredibly careful while you are fiddling around around the back of these things um, obviously we want to be incredibly careful of this this wire here um, anything to do with the transformer this valve uh, because that's all to do with generating the um, EHT so you know when this thing's running we should have probably somewhere around about 10 you know 10,000 volts um, on that incredibly thin um, over 70 year old piece of cable it actually um, to be fair it doesn't actually feel in particular particularly bad um, bad order but it is something we will have to um, we will have to be aware of right well I suppose there's um, absolutely no time like the present um, I haven't done this in quite a long time actually um, power up one of these uh, old vintage TVs so we'll, all, um, we'll shut the power down And we'll switch on. You see the uh, lamp is lit at the back there. Let's see if there are any other signs of life. We should. In fact, let me just turn some of the um, turn some of the light off, and hopefully we should be able to start seeing some of the gla the valves glowing. I presume that's going to be on and volume. So I presume that's going to be the brightness control there. Now it may not be getting, um, oops, don't want to bang that. It may not be getting enough voltage through the fact that we've got the um, limiter in 
in series there for it to actually even be able to do anything. But I can just start to smell um, resistors warming up. Probably resistors that haven't had power on them in um, a very, very, very long time. They're just starting to um, give off a little, um, a little bit of an aroma. I'm keeping my hand very, very tentatively on the um, off here. So I can say it's smelling warm, but it's I can't say it's smelling dangerously hot or anything at this stage. I would expect to be seeing some more illumination from some of the um, heaters though, and I can't really see it. But we're obviously the heaters must be taking some current. I think we're probably just pulling too much through the, um, the safety lamp. Oh, that's hot! The safety lamp really for us to get this um, set any further. So I'm actually wondering whether we just show it full mains and um, see what happens. That's a fun approach, anyway, isn't it? Yeah, because on that reduced voltage, it's really, I don't think it's really doing anything. So I can't actually tell whether the, let me swear if I can switch my other lights off. I'm pretty sure we've got heater continuity, otherwise the um, the light won't be um, that bright. In fact, we could prove that by pulling one of the tubes out, and if the um, lamp goes dim, but we know we've definitely got heater continuity. So let's do that. Let's pull out. Um, I'll pull out the PZ30 because that's the rectifier. That's a nice, easy one to um, remove. Or I will say, actually, that's getting hot. That's getting quite warm. So if that's getting warm, we don't need to pull it out. We can already tell by the fact that that's getting warm, that it's definitely getting um, getting its heater. But so far, absolutely no look at anything on the screen. control up a little bit. Not brought us anything on the screen? Nope. Hmm. Maybe we should just give it full mains and just see what happens. I don't think we're going to have anything um, catastrophic happen because if it would, it would have happened now. And like I said, we'd have had the um, the lamp light up a lot brighter. The tubes are definitely valve. Sorry, we're not in the US. 
Um, the valves are certainly getting warm. So let's switch the um, we'll switch the lim limiter out of circuit and we'll give it another try and we'll see see if we actually get anything. So the only slight thing now is obviously um, if anything goes wrong, the only thing we've got in line is the um, three amp fuse in there to go pop. But let's see what um, see if we get making this makes any difference. I can actually see um, valves lighting up properly now. We can see that there now. Hopefully it's not too dark for you, but um, it does make it easier for us to actually see the um, the valve starting to light. And see a bit of smoke. I'm not going to switch off just yet because that could just be a bit of smoke burning off. Like I said, very old resistors that haven't run for a very very long time. Especially considering that I've had um, that valve starting to red plate. I'll just switch off at that. I can smell a lot of very hot wax basically at this point. Let's switch some light back on. A little bit of smoke, a lot of smoke there, but I, I actually have a feeling, smelling it, it smells like hot wax, so what I think it is, I think it's a lot of the wax that's come off some of those um, old wax paper capacitors, probably while I've been desoldering stuff, you know, some of it has actually got onto some of the resistors which actually run warm, and obviously they're, um, they are getting quite hot with it um, getting to that stage. What did slightly concern me was the um, PZ30 um, there. That seemed to be getting far too hot. It seemed to be red plating, which means that basically the uh, the valve inside was actually getting getting too hot to um, to handle. I will have to just double check that. Um, I have got um, quite a few PZ30, so I might just take one out of um, stock. So what I'll do. Um, I don't have to call it a... no, no, what I'll do is I'll go and um, see if I can dig out another PZ30. I'll just let this cool down a little bit, have a quick check over it and we'll um, go for a second try and see how far we can get there. So, uh, back in a sec. Okay, we're back. Um, I have actually found one issue. Now, unfortunately, what I couldn't do is find a... Um, a spare PZ30, but I actually think I might have found out what the problem is. I tried powering it back up again and just observing it, and I started getting again quite a lot of um, smoke coming out, more than I'd expect, just coming off these few um, power resistors here, which is initially what I thought the um, smoke we was getting was. I thought it was just a bit of wax and muck and crud burning off these um, these high wattage power resistors down here because I mean, it's something you see all the time um, but when I powered it up again I was just listening to it having a smell and it didn't smell right um, so I, I quickly switched back off and I flipped the chassis back up like here and I could see the smoke was actually emanating from the screen can that's usually around here and I think we've got a bad resistor now. I don't know what's happened, but we've got this. It's um, it's um, R8C in the circuit diagram up here, and I mean it's been off for a bit now, but it's still actually I could just about touch it, just about touch it now. But that was red hot and smoking, and that's what was causing a lot of the smoke we saw before. Now I've just had a quick look in the circuit diagram. And it does have um, H high tension on that resistor. Um, it should be a 330 ohm um, resistor. And like I said, that was um, that was 
getting incredibly, incredibly hot. Uh, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to snip it out and just have a quick look, um, actually round it. Um, and then we'll probably put a new, um, if we can't find anything amiss, we'll probably just put a new resistor in there. Um, if I can find what I've done with my snips. Oh, well, these should do. Oh, I've got this awesome new um, light as well for while I'm um, working on it. I don't know if you've noticed this here. Um, I think it's meant for like a, a dressing table or um, something like that. It has a clip on it and a bendy arm and it's dimmable. You can dim it down, you can have it nice and uh, nice and bright. And it is absolutely brilliant for um, when you need to see when you're working on um, a set like this. Like I say, it illuminates everything you want to work on. Previously I've been using an old iPhone for basically doing the same thing, for illuminating what I wanted to work on, but obviously that's tricky when you try to solder. This is, like I say, you can just clip it somewhere, bend it to where you need it, and um, I wish I'd got one a lot sooner. Uh, funnily enough, actually, I've been looking at them on, um, on eBay. I mean, they're not expensive. I think the ones I was looking at, they were um, from China, and they're about eight quid or something like that. Uh, this is actually quite decent, it's all die cast uh, metal. Um, obviously LED obviously. And um, it was brand new, it still had all the um, it still had all the plastic on the arm and everything. And um, it was three quid. I thought that was like one of the best three quids I've, um, I've spent recently. It's, it's really really good for working on these um, on these chassis when you want to illuminate um, one part. Anyway, we'll snip. We'll leave the legs, cause obviously, because we want to see where we're taking it from. We'll snip that there. Snip that there. The reason I've cut it out is I want to inspect. There seems to be some damage to. I think that's a coil underneath, and when that's got. Ah. I wonder if somehow that's managed to touch on there and it's actually grounded out. Because that's grounded, that piece of metal shielding that was. Um, the it basically has a cutout for it for the resistor to go in. Now I wonder if somehow that's shorted like that and it's grounded out. And that's what's actually caused. Yeah, because there's, there's a mark on I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if that's going to show up. There's actually a, like a little burn mark on the resistor. It also seems to have done a little bit of damage to... I think it's just the um, plastic surrounding it. I don't think it's actually gone through it to um, touch. I presume that's a coil in there. They usually are. But no, I don't think it's actually got far enough to actually damage it. All it's done is, um, is it's damaged the, um, the insulation around it. We'll just check that resistor. I don't think it's going to be... Well, it's not going to be going back in. We'll put a new one in, but... We'll just test it and just see what it's um, what it's gone down to. That isn't a mess. Uh, 16 ohms. It should be 330 ohms that resistor, and it's showing. If you can see on there, it's showing up as 16 uh, 16 ohms. So yeah, that's gone. Right. Well, I will. Go and have a quick look in my stock, and I will see if we've got. Uh, I've got a spare. Um, I'm not sure. That's probably probably only a half watt. That I'll go and see what I've got in my stock. Um, ideally, want something of a decent. Obviously, it's got it's got HT on. It's got high tension on it. So we don't want um, like a tiny little modern quarter watt resistor. We want something a little bit um, a little bit bigger. Um, 
a 1 watt, a modern 1 watt would do actually. Let me go and have a look in my resistor um, stock and see if I've got a resistor we can um, stick in there and then we can have another go. So, uh, back in a sec. Apologies, I, uh, I forgot to hit record, but as you can see, I've actually just replaced um, I've replaced that resistor there. I will be putting a new, a different resistor in. I mean, it's the it's the correct value. I think before I said uh, three thirty ohms, it, I was incorrect actually. When I double checked on the circuit diagram, and it is always well to double check. It was actually the resistor next to that one. It's thirty three ohms, and it did have a thirty three ohm. Um, I think that's a two watt in stock. It's completely the wrong style of resistor. Um, I will probably put something a little bit more correct in there, but for, for initial testing um, that should be alright. I'm not 100% sure what happened to the um, original resistor. It looks like it might have... When I was fitting them capacitors, I don't know whether I was just moving it about a little bit, I got it to catch on that bit of shielding be behind it and it had um, shorted out. Um, the damage on it seems to be on the side of the resistor though rather than on either end of it so it's as though it's possibly just worn through and become conductive over time and obviously then just grounded out on that um, that piece of screen underneath it anyway like I said I've, I've put that one and I've put it slightly off so it's not it's not touching anything um, I won't bother putting the RF shielding back on for this initial test, but hopefully, fingers crossed, we can have another go at powering this thing up now. And um, we'll see if we can get any further on. Now, with that shorting out, I was having a look at it in the um, circuit diagram. And that is probably the reason why the um, PZ30 there was red plating. Because basically it was trying to pull all the HT through that resistor to ground. Um, which isn't going to do your um, rectifier any good. Like I said, that's why the whole of the inside of the rectifier was um, glowing red on that, first, on that first test. So we'll give it another, um, we'll give it another try. So I just want this set in a position. Hopefully this will um, this will work quite nicely. So I can actually get round to the controls on the back if I want to just adjust them safely, and I can still get to the two front controls. And hopefully you can see everything there. Like I said, um, that's what was uh, red plated. So first thing is we'll switch on again. We'll um, see if we can get HT up, and we'll just see. Just keep our eye on the rectifier there, and just see if it stays at a normal um, a normal temperature. In fact, I'll just switch my. Right, let's try dimming it right down. There we go. And let's uh, we'll energize the safe block again. And let's give it another try. So we're powering on again. Let's see if we get some heaters up. Are we getting heaters there? Yes, yes you are. We are. We're getting heaters coming up. It sounds like we're getting a line whistle as well. If you look at the rectifier there, now that's not red plating anymore. What I mean by red plating is the, the actual sides of the valve there were glowing red and they shouldn't do. You should see the heaters in the valve glowing. But you shouldn't see any of the red metal work here glowing. That, that basically indicates that the valve's not happy. There's still no sign of any life on the screen but... So the line whistle sounds promising. That'll be volume control. This should be. So okay, we've still got no um, nothing on screen. Let's have a quick fiddle with the um, the controls on the rear.
Hey, look at that. I don't know if you can make that out. I've just turned the uh, brightness control right up. I don't know whether that's going to come out on the camera. Let me just try switching this off. So I don't know if that's coming out on the camera, but that's what we mean by first light. As you can see, it, in fact, this I think this CRT is very, very, very done by the look of it. I've got the bright, brightness and the contrast controls cranked as high as they'll possibly go. Um, and that is basically all we're getting so far. But this is what this is what we mean by first light. Well, what we do know is um, our high tension is there. We don't know if we've got enough high tension. That could be the problem. We, our um, high tension could be uh, it, sorry EHT. Our EHT could be down. Like I said, I think these um, CRTs, generally speaking, run probably around seven to ten kilovolts, seven to ten thousand volts. Uh, I don't know whether we've got that on the CRT at the moment, and I'm not sure where my HV um, probe is to actually test that. Uh, but we do have first signs. We do ha exact actually have first signs of life. Life. I don't think altering of these is going to make it. A lot of the controls are very scratchy. Oops. There we go. Oops. That's that controls very intermittent. We do actually Oh, hang on Hang on Look at that! It was just that control was a bit duff. Like I said, it's massively out of whack. Contrasted, I don't think. Yeah, because that that'll be oh that'll be volume, but that might improve with a bit of use. We might actually we might actually get somewhere with this. I so said that C that CRT may actually improve a little bit. It does look dim. It does look dim, but you know, sometimes with these CRTs, they will improve with use. And it does have ion burn on it. If you look at that in the centre of the CRT, can you see that shadow there? That's what's known as ion burn. Um, a lot of these early CRTs suffered from that. Um, it doesn't really bother me. Um, it was just something that, like I said, some of these early um, sets suffered from. Um, but that is basically first light. We do have first light on this set now. Um, with that, I think I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, hopefully, I might, if I get time, have a bit more of a play with this off camera. Um, see if I can get my standards converter. Uh, I have to dig it out of um, storage. Get that set up to the actual set, and see if I can get a test pattern to run on it. And if I can, I might put a video out on um, Christmas Day, just of um, perhaps put the set together back a little bit and see if we can actually just get a test card to run on it or something like that. So it'll probably need me to do a little bit more work um, from that. Um, I'll have to see time-wise whether I'm going to have time. But we've got first light. We do actually have the basis of a, um, a restorable set, 100%. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this little update on the um, project. So, um, like I said, fingers crossed I can get that video up on Christmas Day. But if not, I'll try and get one up as soon as possible, as soon as I can make a little bit more progress with this set. If 
fact, I think that's brightening up even while we're watching it now. I think that CRT is going to come back to life. It definitely seems to be improving just while it's sitting here now. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this little um, update on the project. So uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.